the territory for wh which, which I do represent is most of New Mexico, western Colorado, and southeast Arizona. The gentleman who would otherwise have been here is Gene Ross, who, whose uh, territory includes Texas. He uh, asked me to come here, and I'm glad to do that. Um, I've been with Nelson since early uh, 2010, and prior to that, I have, uh, I've lived for 10 years in northwest New Mexico, working on the 70,000-acre uh, farm there just south of Farmington. Nelson Irrigation Corporation is one of the premier companies in uh, Sprinkler. Our, uh, I will, would like to recognize that um, um, our colleagues uh, in Senegar are here as well and uh, appreciate uh, and wanted to recognize that they uh, got a, a, a fine um, recognition from uh, Irrigation Association uh, in Phoenix recently and uh, congratulations to them for a recent innovation in their product line. I wanted to start off just talking a bit about um, uniformity and in fact the topic of uniformity comes up um, threaded through my presentation. Uh, anyone running uh, irrigation of uh, center pivot irrigation systems uh, really must understand the, the, the need for uniformity and it, it can be described in, in different terms. If you look at a couple of uh, photos that I'll present here, you can see some uniformity. Um, this field represented by a, a photograph from above shows a high degree of uniformity in most of the field. And uh, I'll discuss the remaining part of the field with you at a later point if you want to pursue that with me. Um, here's a, an example of a, another field, much less uh, uniform and significant problems with it, uh, with um, water application problems in about the second span there, and, uh, and then splotches throughout the field that represents uh, uh, water application problems, um, possibly some runoff. And another example is, e is even uh, more problematic with the center pivot system stopping in places and then runoff and channels throughout the field. Uniformity can be a problem, but it's not insurmountable if one plans for the issues. Center pivot systems can have a great deal of uniformity advantages and uh, can have a high application efficiency as well. Labor savings uh, are out there as well as energy savings. and. Uh, they, are, they can be very dependable and cost effective. In terms of uh, labor savings, my father could attest to that. I, I grew up in, in uh, south central Kansas and got my teeth cut on uh, hand move pipe when I was in grade school with my brothers and we had to lift uh, hand move pipe over, I swear it was 12 foot tall corn and I had to use stilts with our arms to lift it over that corn. And uh, I hated irrigation at that point. But um, my father, once uh, he started getting us into college, uh, saw the light and, and bought some uh, center pivot systems. Uh, I don't think he wanted to uh, even try to uh, keep his hand move lanes going. Sprinklers that you use on center pivots, if properly selected and used, can control the, the runoff and can help with the correct infiltration into the soil. In this general area, I understand that you, you have a lot of uh, clay loam soils. I'm familiar with uh, a lot of sandy soils in the northwest part of New Mexico, and it varies all over the place. So not one sprinkler selection is a catch-all. It has to be carefully uh, determined what works best. If uh, the inputs are, including the sprinklers, are selected correctly, you can get high ir irrigation efficiency and good yields from the system. For our company, uh, you, you'll see a lineup of sprinklers, and of course, I must, I must just revert here a second to uh, uh, definitions. 
I grew up with the, the term, uh, or I, my f most familiar recollection of the term sprinkler means these devices. Now I've heard some people talk about a sprinkler in terms of a pivot. So I get, I, I really have to think twice when people talk about there's a, there's a nozzle. When, when some people say a nozzle, they're talking about this stuff here. So just uh, be aware, some of us talk uh, with different terms in here. Um, anyway, uh, the foundation of a, a sprinkler is set up for a, a pivot will include the nozzles, as you see on top, may or may not include uh, regulators, and, and then the sprinkler type, which could include full circle or could include a part circle type of sprinkler. On our table, we have produced and I have available some pocket guides that include some of the uh, points about which I'm discussing, including uniformity and some other of the concepts that you see here. Uh, efficiency, throw distance, average application rate, and so forth. Some really uh, important information about how you think about and plan for and operate a center pivot irrigation system. With uh, field, uh, the pivot products, uh, the selection that you make for sprinklers always needs to consider uh, the soil factors, what kind of soil, what kind of intake you have, also the water supply, the quality of the water, the uh, amount of water that you'll have available um, in, in, water, in water supply, critical areas where you want to put on, say, six gallons per minute per acre, uh, it may be a significantly different type of sprinkler you want to choose versus an area that will long-term be using uh, eight gallons a minute per acre for whatever reason. Uh, crop factors, what kind of crop do you have um, will play a factor in that. Mother Nature throws at you a, a number of different things uh, um, during the cropping, crop growing season. That may be, uh, wind speed. You may have some uh, high temperatures to, that you're going to deal with uh, during that growing, critical growing season. Uh, other factors um, in the, from uh, the weather and the climate. Now, just to touch, I want to touch just briefly on some uh, concepts of soils. Um, texture is one of those things that Mother Nature gives you. If you have um, a field out here and you're not going to be moving soil on or off the field. You, what's, what's out there is what you got to work with, and that's and texture is simply uh, a way of uh, describing the proportions of sand, silt, and clay. Whereas the structure of the soil is something very much impacted by uh, what you do, as well as by rainfall and applications of water, and perhaps uh, cattle or or other effects on the soil. The structure is incredibly important. Now the, the texture will have uh, some effect on, uh, certainly on water intake rates, but the structure also plays a big part of that. What you're given plays a part, what you do with it, and what other uh, uh, actions um, are done on the field and soils also can play a part, a significant part in root penetration, infiltration, aeration, and so forth. Uh, when I talked about the, the soil texture, uh, I mentioned clay, silt, and sand proportions. If you have a, dominant, a soil with a dominant clay uh, volume, uh, it's going to have a, a very likely, high likelihood of uh, low infiltration rates in many cases, and ponding is, is a possi good possibility. If, you, if silt dominates or the significant part of silt in there, um, it, it would be impacted at the surface a lot by, um, by droplet impacts and energy uh, of the droplets on the soils. If you have a high dominance of sand, it's going to reduce your water holding capacity and very likely much easier for you to lose water down beyond the root zone. The root zone may be shallower, and, and you would tend to lose also water on beyond the root zone. 
Anyway, those are some really quite generalizations here and uh, certainly don't begin to cover uh, the finer understanding, but um, we'll uh, just understand that clay, silt, and uh, sand are, are the basic uh, features of, of soils. 